breaking news. Sony's newest full-frame mirrorless camera has leaked and the specs look amazing. And based on what I know today, I'm planning to buy two of them. Uh, first, a word from our sponsor, Squarespace. Your online presence needs to be amazing. You have to control it though. You can't just throw up a Facebook or Instagram page. Something better needs to come up when people are trying to find you. You need your own domain name. You need your own sense of style and design, and you need to make sure your best work is put forward. To do that, go to squarespace.com Tony. There is an amazing website builder that will let you just drag things in and make a perfect website that is immediately available on any sorts of devices, desktop, laptops, tablets, phones. Try it out for free. If you love it, use the coupon code Tony and get 10% off. Thanks Squarespace and thank you to SonyAlphaRumors.com who works really hard to bring us this sort of early news and that really helps us make planning choices. You know, you can push back decisions, maybe push back buying that next A7S III because you know this new camera is coming out. Also thanks to his source, Nokashida in Japan, who leaked some of these original pictures like this one. This really crazy looking body that completely blew my mind when I first looked at it. I'm like, what is this? Is this an A6600? Is it a cinema camera? What is with that cool gray finish that I really like? Just looking at this picture, we can tell a whole lot about what it can do and what it can't do. The most interesting thing is it says FX3 cinema line on it. But at the same time, things like the dial here resemble that of Sony's mirrorless DSLR stills focused cameras. So to me that says it's kind of a hybrid and maybe this is a video centric camera meant for people like myself who started doing video using their stills cameras. I think really that describes like just about every YouTuber out there and a lot of upcoming videographers and filmmakers. I think we're all going to find this form factor really, really interesting. Also notice these big gaping holes on the top and sides of the camera. This camera has a cage built right into it. And if you're not a big video shooter, a lot of videographers need to attach microphones and receivers and screens to the camera. And so right now you have to buy an external sort of metal attachment that screws into the tripod and maybe hooks into the strap mounts so that you can attach more things to your camera and sort of create a mobile rig with everything that you need. I actually had to stick on a cold shoe on my Sony a7S III in order to make some wireless headphones for myself and I lamented why don't they just build this into the camera? They have the space. And then, well, you know, Sony did it. It's like they, they watched my videos or something. Thank you, Sony. I think this is so cool. And two of those little attachment points on top, guess what you can do? You can attach a digital microphone to the top of it. So you can always attach digital microphones directly into the hot shoe of the latest Sony cameras. And that's how we film all our out and about videos on a Sony a7S III. This negates the need for loose cables, which get snagged on things or can ruin your entire video if they come loose. It also means the camera can provide power to the microphone. That way you don't have separate batteries that can fail. It, it was a game changer for us. And it's the reason we chose Sony over Canon video. But this goes to the next level by uh, taking Sony's FX line of microphone attachments. This does a couple of things. First, it lets you hook up actual XLR microphones if you want to. You can see that there, but it also moves the microphone forward some. And for vloggers like, like myself who are using a shotgun mic, moving the microphone forward eight inches or a foot dramatically improves your audio quality without requiring you to wear a lav mic like this. I know this because I've tested it and I used to use this sort of janky rig just to move the microphone forward. So the ability to do this built into a small form factor camera with the menu system of the Sony a7S III, like this is the exact camera that I want multiple of. So thank you, Sony, for making that. Let's take another look at the back of it. In the upper left corner here, we see a power switch, which is not where the power switch is on any other Sony camera. Most Sony cameras have the power switch right next to the shutter button, so your index finger hits it. There is a switch there, 
but that is the power zoom switch. So they moved the power switch in order to let you control the zoom of the attached lens. Now, if you're a Sony shooter, you're looking at your lenses and they probably don't have a motor in there to zoom it, right? You're probably mechanically zooming it. Sony has two full frame power zoom cinema lenses, the 20 to 135 F4, at a crazy $2,500, we tested it and we loved using the lens. We loved the workflow of the lens and we loved the power zoom on it because you can just sort of slowly and evenly push in and create cinematic effects you can't do by manually zooming. We didn't love the image quality. In fact, it's kind of a really old lens now. But I am super interested in this $5,500 16 to 35 T 3.1. I think it's a repackaged 16 to 35 F2.8 stills lens, but they added in a little motor that you can see at the bottom there and a power zoom switch on the lens in case you're using a body that does not have that power zoom switch, as well as, you know, grippier dials that you could more easily attach to a mechanical focus puller if you wanted to. Looking at the front of the camera, we see a lot of the buttons are available to somebody working in front of the camera. This has specifically been one of my requests is that manufacturers think about vloggers like myself who are the on-camera talent and the camera operator and we need to be able to see what's going on and operate the camera from the front. This really helps. In fact, they seem to have given us two record buttons, one on top for maybe somebody working behind the camera or a gimbal operator, and one on front for the times when you are working in front of the camera. And what about that flip screen? A lot of YouTubers, a lot of vloggers put the camera on a gimbal, and when you flip the screen out, that changes the balance of the gimbal. And some gimbals might not even have the space in order to flip the screen out. So often when you're working behind the camera, a tilt screen is preferable. But if you are working in front of the camera, or for example, you're performing an interview and you need to man manage two different cameras and you want to monitor the screen, it can be really useful to flip the screen out to the side or go all the way 180 degrees forward. So you kind of need both. So Sony gave us the best of both worlds. They mounted their usual tilting screen to a sc flip screen that flips out 180 degrees. So you can tilt the screen up and down without shifting the weight to the side and throwing off your gimbal or you can flip the entire screen forward. This is similar to what the Panasonic S1H does, and it has one major drawback, and that's bulk. It does make the screen itself much, much bigger. Speaking of that rear screen, I hope it's better than the screen built into every other Sony camera. They get completely washed out in the sun, and they're all super low resolution, so you can't necessarily see whether you nailed focus or not. It's really important in this camera because it does not have an electronic viewfinder. Did you notice it's just completely missing? I actually requested this in a review of the Sony a7S III because I never used the viewfinder on my Sony a7S III. It's gorgeous and I'm paying for it and I'm carrying it everywhere, but I don't use it. So they took it off. I feel like they did it just for me. Don't ruin this moment for me. Just let me feel special. Let me think that Sony did this just for me. Let's go over the Sony Alpha rumor specs. He says that it's going to be 4K at 120 frames per second or less, obviously, but not an 8K camera. This makes me think that it has the Sony a7S III guts and not the Sony Alpha One guts. He says that it has a fan in it, active cooling, and the Sony a7S III does not have a fan, so why would it need it? Well, some people suggested in the comments that as the camera heats up from long recording times that the heat will actually introduce more noise into the video. And so filmmakers might want the option at least to turn on the fan and keep the temperature down. I'm confident that you'd have the ability to control it so that it's not adding noise that can be picked up on the microphones. The package is supposed to include an XLR adapter so you could attach the big mics to it if you want at no additional cost and it should have the S Cinetone profile so that filmmakers can max, match their other FX cameras. A lot of people are asking whether or not it will have a variable ND filter and some people point out it doesn't have a dial to control the very ND filter. The variable ND filter is a tool that filmmakers use in order to get a precise, slower shutter speed. It's like sunglasses for the camera, and it enables them to hit that 180 shutter that's so frequently used in filmmaking. It doesn't have a dial to control that, but I don't think that means it doesn't have it because Sony has released RX cameras in the past that had variable ND filters built into it, and you controlled them via software. So I think it is possible that they would just require you to go into the menus or program a custom function button. The price, this is gonna hurt. 
because there is a figurative tax on anything cinema related. They just charge way more. Sony Alpha Rumors has quoted two prices, 3,800 euros and 4,500 euros. And he suggests that the 3,800 might be without the VAT, the value added tax that they have in Europe, and 45 might be with that VAT. How these translate into US dollars, I think it's gonna be between $3,200 and $3,800, which puts it really close to the Sony A7S III price point. So the Sony A7S III in many ways is a more capable camera, but it's meant more as a hybrid camera. And this is going to be a little more video centric camera, a smaller form factor. And honestly, if I'm choosing between the two, Based on what I know now, I'm picking the FX3 for the type of work that we do. And we could be buying a lot of these. Like I have eight cameras in this studio here and we use two cameras in the field when we're out vlogging. And there are thousands and thousands of YouTube channels bigger than this one. So there's actually a pretty substantial market for these things. In the comments down below, tell me what you think about this. Like, does this meet any of your needs? Are you interested in this? Are you frustrated that Sony's not making something else? And go to squarespace.com slash Tony and see how easy it is to set up a beautiful web presence that really makes, makes you look way better online. If you're running a business, it will make the business more effective, more attractive, and it does not take a lot of time or technical skills. It's just totally free to try out. So try it out. If you love it, after the free trial, use the coupon code TONY to get 10% off. Thank you, Squarespace.